To start us off today, we have Mr. Leroy Anderson. Um, like I told you, the boy is he's absolutely amazing. He's going to teach us on some things that uh, we have not been introduced to as of yet. And uh, I know you'll thoroughly enjoy it. So, Mr. Anderson. All right, all it. right. No, I got a mic right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. All right, Rashidi, can you hear me? All right. Why, thank you very much. I feel so much love here. <laughs> um, first thing first, I'm Leroy Anderson. Uh, I've been, just a little bit about me. I've been in sales for about 26 years. I uh, sold everything from meat on the side of the road, telemarketing, mortgage, you name it. Not everything, but you name it, <laughs> I probably sold it. Um, hey, credit card machines, whatever. Um, and I I'm actually do taxes too which I'm giving up, you know, I just have a certain amount of clients that I want to do. When I was introduced to this company, by me doing sales for so long, I always thought, because every sale I had to do was the hardest sale, the hardest sale, the hardest sale. Somebody told me, listen, you just talk to people and you get paid. I was like, what? You talk to somebody and you get paid? I said, how much? They said about 300 to 1,000. I'm a type A, I'm an action person. You talk money, I'm gone. I don't care how you say it, just show me what I got to do and I'll go get it. I took my test, passed it in a week. That's how serious I was. Afterwards, I didn't do the business for about six months. Because, you know, I'm checking the things out, checking it out, checking it out. You know how it is. You come to these meetings, you don't have a license, you're in a financial club. Not, <laughs> you're serious. You're in a financial club, not a financial services industry, because you hear people, I got paid. Man, you get your cycle. What is a cycle? You know, I'm like, I'm hearing all these words. I asked a friend of mine, I said, um, his name was Hugh Lee. I said, Hugh Lee. How much you get paid? He said, $4,000. I said, how long it took you? He said, about eight hours. I said, what? <laughs> I said, eight hours? So I jumped into it. So Shanice happened to want, Shanice, this is my second half. She's right there. <laughs> she, she, want, she happened to go to a trip. Um, she actually does travel, but she's in the business. She had to take a trip to uh, Mexico. So now I'm in the business tough. She comes back. We was on the bus. Come back, we in the Mercedes Benz. She was like, wait a minute. Somebody gotta come pick me up in the airport. I didn't tell her. I didn't say nothing. I said, well, get your girlfriend to come get you. They stood me up. You know how them women are? You know, there's more words than that. Blank, you, know, you know, the blankety blanks and everything else. So I said, all right, I'll be there. She said, well, how you gonna get there? I'll be there. So I get there. Hey, see, Shanice, she looked. She's seeing a car. Who car is this? Don't worry about it. Get in. <laughs> what kind of car is this? This is a Benz. Chill. Lay back. How'd you get this car? I paid cash. You pay your note? No, cash. WFG. 11 grand in one month. One month. So it can be done. I'm, a big, I'm the biggest skeptic out here. I done sold coffee. Two companies with coffee. I done sold tea. Movado. All the lotions and potions, I done sold the cream that you put on your eyes and, you know, I ain't gonna say the name, but it take the puffiness out, 300 something dollars, you know how that go? The inventory kill you, and you got a cycle coming in each month, you can't, listen, you got a garage full of this stuff. WFG is so simple. What makes it hard is the people. The easiest thing about the business is a system. You have the approach, you have the prospecting, approaching contact, and all the other six steps. The only step that involves us is the second step the approaching contact. Everything else is laid out, but we fail to do that. I'm gonna tell you like this. As Jeff would say, just on the other side of you don't feel like it is all your dreams. So my dream now is an SMD. I'll be an SMD by the end of this month with no problem. Um, that's, a, that's a challenge right there in itself, but it's not the hardest challenge. The hardest challenge is getting everybody to do what they need to do for themselves. Who invited the guests here tonight that didn't show? Shame on them, right? Yes. Exactly. They don't know what they're missing. They don't even know what it is. They, oh, it's one of them things. Oh. Then when you get your money, you start riding around a nice car. You ain't working no more, are you? No, I'm doing that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that thing. You know, so you have to really just look at it, just say it's not their time. They're just not wise enough to understand what you're handing to them. Because when a student is ready, the teacher will appear. So right now, they just not appear for them. They let them bang their head against the wall. 
to keep doing that. And some of us right now are struggling. But think about it like this. The struggle is real, but it's also fun. Don't, I mean, don't beat me up to what you talking about, my bills. No, don't do that. Marcus, Fong, and I actually struggled together. Okay? And by us being in Philly, we didn't have the correct mentorship in our in our industry. Marcus was doing his thing. I come up to him, man, brother, you smooth. Help me out. He's like, man, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm doing something. I'm sitting down with them. I, hey, they sign up. I, that's good. So I follow suit, do the same thing. Charge back. <laughs> Wrong. Had little baby mortgages. You know, that. but that, if you scrape yourself up, you can get up and walk. If you can write another account, write another one. Keep writing. We're going to get chargebacks. That's nothing. But you can minimize that by learning the skills that I'm about to show, which is very simple, very easy to do, very easy to do. So I changed the name. I said uh, it, it's, it was called the art of seduction, really. Mm. <laughs> so, but I'm, I, I just keep it PG for everybody. Uh, we call it the art of seduction. But when you start looking at sales concepts, let's look at this, sales concepts. Real quick, we educate families on how to operate and live in the, uh, the world we live in, okay? Sales is another form of psychology. The definition basically is mental and emotional. What we do is actually we talk to them in a psychological form. Everybody does it. Women do it to us, man. They do it to us. You know that look? They get, they get fly. They know they got on nice clothes. And we, and they, what you looking at? And you're like, ah. Oh. And you keep walking, but they never, say not, they never say anything else, but they look at you, and then you look back. It's a game they play mentally. But if we know how to play the game, guess what? We can win, too. Exactly. Because when we look at that woman, we say, I'm going to get her. They be like, he ain't getting me. All of a sudden, what happened? Y'all walking down the aisle, he got me. Oh. <laughs> you know how it is. So the psychology is real. It's just who's closing who? That's all it is, is who's closing who. So look at the art of seduction by Robert Greene. It manipulates anyone's greatest weakness. Women do it to us. Manipulate our greatest weakness. You don't take out the trash, I ain't, you know what's up. And you're like, oh, you get up 3 o'clock in the morning to take out that trash. <laughs> exactly. It's the same exact way. So look at people that you talk to. It's not about you. It's about them. What's in it for them? You talk to the with them, exactly. So if you see somebody sharp like this man, he's in mortgage, I'm gonna talk to him about a revenue sharing program and cutting his taxes, minimizing his taxes. You think he ain't gonna listen to me? Talk to a school teacher, would you like to help people educate families on the financial studies of life instead of them just teaching about the antiquated things that they never show, talk about as money? Well, yeah, great, come out. Sit down, let's meet, we should talk. And that's how you bring people to the meetings. Now, I'm going to teach you something small. Everybody should know about this. It's called the ABCs and 123s of finance. These are concepts that I learned from Mr. Fong Lee, but they're also out there in the books. Basically, you have a fixed account. The red means it's taxed now. It's your bank account. We all know this is bank accounts, CDs. You get taxed every year. No matter what, faithfully, they hand you a 1099. Take it to your, yes, sir. Oh, they take it to 1099 and do what you have to do. And it's actual taxable. So think about this. If you had $20,000 in the account and it was going to your child's college fund, they're going to tax you no matter what. No matter what. You're like, that's my kid's college fund. I don't care. Pay me. Because it's capital gains tax. Variable taxes. Who actually in here works? Who works? Who receives their 401ks, 403bs, or 457s? Who got the retirement plans? When's the last time you looked at them statements? You don't even want to look at them, do you? They go up and down, right, like a heartbeat. That's what that line stands for, it's variable. That red line tax later means it's at the end of your money. You see how that thing goes real big? That's that money at the end. That's when them gangsters come see you, called the IRS. And they say, uh, you, oh, you retiring? Yeah. Well, we don't know what taxes is going to be in 20 years, but guess what? We're going to take it from the top, regardless. The companies try to match you so they can help mitigate and offset taxes, but it's not gonna help you. 
But then you have another option, which is C3, which is tax-free, it's index-linked. A lot of us don't know nothing about these accounts. And if I sat down with you in the house and gave you a training and said, let me ask you something. I'm going to say, look, Richard, let me ask you this. Would you like to know some of the options for your money or all the options for your money? All, exactly. And if I show you something and I talk about a tax advantage or a tax-free account that the rich have been used to every time, all the time, how would you feel? Exactly. But if, I, if you was stuck over here and you just, the stock market just crashed and you lost about $20,000, would you be upset? Then nobody never told you about this? Exactly. That's why we need to do what we need to do. That's why we need to go out there and save families. That's why, no matter if they say no, that's fine. Have your partner, business partner, call them three months later. Or just bump into them accidentally. It's called intentionally meeting somebody. So you do that. You start holding up these type of concepts. It works on people. It's emotionally works on them. It's not what, how, and why. It's why, how, then what. You touch them in the heart first, disturb them, intrigue them and then they will open up their books to you. It's just like looking at the la dirty laundry, but it's just money. Now, asset versus investment risk versus asset class. CDs, lower safety, being in the market is very risky, but if you can get that middle where it can balance out, where you can get best of both worlds, who wouldn't want that? The thing is, people, they don't know what they want until you show them. We persuade them in a good way to do what's best for them. Is this a scam? Well, let me think. Hmm. So I'm going to come to your house, show you how to save money in the best vehicle possible for you to get a best, the best compound interest for your life when you retire. And it's your cash and it grows at a bigger number and it's tax free. You can pull it out when you want to. Is that a scam? I'm showing you how to save your own money instead of it going up and down in the market. I'm showing you how to make it go up. Is that a scam? Well, that's not, it's too good to be true. I would like you to say that. I'd rather for you to say it's too good to be true than say it's a scam. Let me show you how it's true. Now, let's look at something else here real quick. The finance part, fixed assets. Who knows what fixed assets are? We see them all the time. Fixed assets, bank accounts, check accounts, CDs, everybody got these things. But the thing is, is your money growing the way it's supposed to grow? Can anybody retire off of that? Yeah. Exactly. Then you got these. Look at that. 1099 in the year. I just talked about that. You got to report your gains. They say you must report your gains. That's what they say. What well, we are in compliance to report that. Okay, whether it's a penny or a few dollars. Just report it. <laughs> so, <laughs> some of us don't even have some sense even in the report, so it's probably the negative. <laughs> so we already know. So 95% of Americans have these type of accounts. Now, can't retire off of these gains. Let's look at this. We go here to variable assets. Who has one of these? Anybody? Retirement, 401k, 403b, something like that. Okay, well, these accounts do it like they go crazy like that. They're like somebody EKG machine or something. That's how your money's rolling. Think about that. Now, if you was gonna retire with that red line is great dip off that cliff, and you were 64 and a half years old and you had a million dollars and it dropped to 38 percent, you lost 380,000. Be sick, wouldn't you? Exactly. So, how many people do you think you can save from falling off that cliff? That's what we have to start talking to them about. Look at the people in the workforce that have these. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See that? People want a guarantee. No loss of money for retirement. They want tax-free guarantee. They want to grow at an exponential rate. It's a real big order. But we can do it. Indexing method. Boy, that thing looks so good. I think I might get another one. Anybody want to write me up tonight? <laughs> Anybody want to write me up $250,000 policy? Anybody got me? Yes. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> the, ind <laughs> the indexing method, look at it. The blue line, it follows the indexes, but it's not in the market. The indexing method means it follows the S&P 500 market without being in the market. It's like 
looking at the mirror doing this thing, but when the mirror fall and break, you don't. Yeah, good analogy, right? So every time the market crash, look at it flat lines, and when the market comes back, it keeps going up. It's a step method. That's how people money want, they want their money to look like that. If it can grow at 6%, 9%, 10%, cap 15%, and the less they can get is 0.75% or zero, and they can pull the money out tax-free when they want to buy a car, take the kids to college, do whatever they want to do. Isn't that awesome? S supplemental retirement plan. Now, look at that. IUL, 6.2 versus the S&P 500, the average over that spread. Within 10 years, look at that spread. That's a, some large numbers, very large numbers. Now, look at this. Let's say understanding taxes. We know how tax now work. It's all up front. Tax later is at the back half. Tax free or tax advantage accounts, you get taxed on your money already. So when you have a check and you got that money, you say, man, I got an extra $500 left over. Ladies, do not buy purses or shoes. Gentlemen, do not spend the money for the purses or shoes. <laughs> Put this into these type of accounts, which you can actually buy houses and cars for them. The purses and shoes will change. They're going to get that later. But the house and the car, they'll never forget you on that one. Unless you buy the matching shoes. And they be like, oh. <laughs> or the matching purse. Oh. So tax-free account. So it starts off with the money being taxed already. And then it grows tax-free, constantly growing, compounding, compounding, compounding. This is how your money actually works. But a lot of people don't understand how money works. That's why the banks have all the debt they building up new places on a regular basis. They see this constantly. They say, okay, Leroy Anderson has $30,000 worth of debt with us. He good. Let's see if we can give him just a little bit more until he filed bankruptcy. They have to bring. So now we're robbing Peter to pay Paul. And we're barely eating or living in the house that we're supposed to. Because we don't understand how to use our money correctly. We don't understand how to save. And that's where a lot of people need to get back to the old school way. Like our fathers and grandfathers and forefathers save money. All that material stuff is what it is, is material. Exactly. So enjoy your life at a younger age versus working all the way up to 65, 70. And then you say, oh, God, I can retire now. But then you have a 401k that may run out in 13 years. So you have to look at those things. Taxes, inflation, all these things eat up money. But if you have a vehicle that can outpace inflation and taxes, that's awesome. Now, here you go. Look at, the, look at this. The historical question, are taxes on the way up or down? That red line represents taxes. That red, the uh, blue line represents debt. In the 1920s and up, taxes has always been over debt, historically. We're in the age now where debt is over taxes. What do you think is going to happen to taxes if they historically is always over debt? They're going to go up. And what's going to happen to your money? It's not going to have that spending power no more. Spending power is gone. So what would we like to fund in these counts? Retirement. Look at this. Counts are strictly offensive, no defensive, which is subject to market risk. Don't nobody like that word, market risk. Anybody like to be risky with their money? So how many people out there are risking their money then? How many people do you think we need to go talk to? We ain't Jesus. We can't save them all. That's why we need to do 10, 10, 30s. <laughs> we have our people to help us with this crusade. Guess who was the best recruiter out there? Jesus. He, hey, he recruited the best 12. I know. They still going. If you call that a pyramid scheme, that's the best one I see. <laughs> so we pattern ourselves after them. Look, you get a 10-10 or a 12-12, there you go. You got your disciples. And that's what they're going to do, help you help families. So now, look at your retirement gains. It reflects your losses and gains, things like that. That's how it looks. Money is a serious thing for people. So look at the tax now, tax later, tax free. I'll wait if you want to take a picture. So these are how you line up what's going on with these type of funds. You have to know certain things about 
these different strategies and accounts, get with your SMDs, get with your MDs, they'll start telling you a little bit more about these type of accounts. If you don't have a securities license, you can't talk about certain things like invest, uh, like the 529, the IRA SEPs and things like that. However, you can learn about them and you can start getting your licensing for those. This is just opening up the market for you to actually do fixed products even more. Because a lot of people, they say, well, I want to be risky. How much you got? I got $100,000. How much you want to get? I want to get $500,000. And how long? In three years. So that means you're willing to take a real great risk. You mean to tell me you can hit a home run or you can strike out? Do you, have, do you really want to do that? They think about it. They say, what do you mean strike out? You can lose it all, like, at a, like a Vegas crap table. They say, no. Do you want to take a slower approach? And most of them say yes. So some of them may have a tolerance for a little bit of risk, maybe 10%. Other than that, most people want fixed. They want guarantees. They want to make sure they have a check coming in each month so they can live right. Now, we already know about the tax now. I'm not going to bore you with this. These accounts grow less than 1%. They can't outpace inflation. We already know that. Um, now, your tax deferred. Inflation is a silent killer, along with the taxes. So you have two things against you, well, really three. You have the stock market, inflation, taxes, and then you got your kids. Uh, that's the unknown. Because <laughs> they do come back to the house. That's the unknown. <laughs> so you have to look at that. So the S&P produced over a 14-year period about 4.07% gain. That's with the pluses and the minuses. So these 403Bs, 4057s, things like that are tax codes. They was implemented in the 80s because the pension system was cut out. A pension is nothing but a big annuity. When you learn about annuities, that's what a pension is. Social Security is nothing but a big annuity. Same thing. If people say, I don't like annuities, so that means you don't want Social Security. No, I ain't say that. So you want that check every month? Yes. Great. So annuities are good. That's called a personal pension plan for someone if they get an annuity. You can actually take money from the 401ks, 403bs, and 457s and move it to a fixed product and get paid handsomely for it. Just filling out some paperwork. You might get three, four, five, six or more. That's right. See, this young, uh, the reason why I'm picking on this gentleman up in the front row, he's a truck driver. You know, he makes a little bit of cash right now. He's, he's catching his time for that hard labor of truck driving, riding around the city, cussing people out. <laughs> you, know, you know how it is, getting in tight parking spaces. He can't do it. He's like, man, I'm upset. <laughs> then you got to go out, and after that, you come home from work, you're tired, you got to look good, and you might fall asleep somewhere on the couch. With WFG, every day is a payday. We get paid every 72 hours, Tuesdays and Fridays. It's like clockwork. Your phone will ring and go. It's like... You know, if you talk about three three thirties, but it's called thirty three three thirty three, <laughs> and it's, it pops up and it says you have this, and you go, "Whoo, it's a good day." You put it back in your pocket. So and then all of a sudden you mess up some commas, you ha accidentally go out Tuesday night and you mess up some money, you get paid on the Friday. Every day is Friday for us. Every day is a holiday for us. But when we work, we work. We get it in, we work. Sometimes you might not come home one, two o'clock in the morning. You know how it is, guys, they calling you, or ladies, where you at? I'm working at the office. Yeah, right. Then you get that check on Tuesday. See what I got? Oh yeah, we, we going out. <laughs> you don't forgot about me working at the office till 12, one o'clock. You done cuss me out already. Call me a, everything but a child of God. You know, you got glitter on your shirt. What? I got, you know how it go. But that's money. That's how it works. <laughs> so now you have tax-free accounts. You have your Roth IRAs. You know, however it follows the market. It's variable. It has a 59 and a half rule. 59 and a half rule, people. You should know this from the test. <clears throat> from the test. Miss. <clears throat> Yes. <laughs> this is part of the, the annuity stuff. <laughs> so 59 and a half rule is more so you can't take your, if you take your money out prior to that, you get penalized in qualified accounts. Okay. 
the Roth it follows that same kind of rule, but it doesn't have the 70 and a half rule. It just had the first 59 and a half. So the money can be taxable. Uh, other than that, you get penalized only on your gains with that uh, Roth. Now let's get to the good parts. There's good stuff that we all actually talk to people about, which is 5% of the Americans have something called the IUL. We all know about the IUL. We all say, IUL so good, IUL so good. But you don't want to be an IUL salesperson. You want to take the FNA to figure out what they need. They can have, they can just need a will plan from Everest and a pat on the back and say, we can do this together. Serious. You can, hey, I don't care. 20 bucks go a long way. It still, it still has a will plan. It also has a death benefit. You protect them some kind of way. A LB, if they can, $25. You know, you can break the LB down to $25,000, just put it in standard. They might only have to pay $26 for 25 grand. Protect them some kind of way. The IUL is a supplemental retirement plan. Yes, it has a chassis of uh, insurance, but we're using that as a supplemental retirement plan. Okay, if they have the money to do that, listen, by all means, give them what they need. Because you set that family up for the rest of their life, guess what they're going to do? Refer you out. Same thing. But matter of fact, speaking of referrals, who's asking for referrals in here every time they sit down with a person? Okay. The beginning or the end? That's at the beginning. Because it's fresh on their mind. Because once you disturb and intrigue them already and you take the FNA, after you get their dirty laundry, he said, who do you know that may want to know something about this too? that need help just like you. Not saying that you know them, but you know someone like them. I just need five people. And guess what they'll do? Okay. And you come back with the plan. And you ask them again. Who else they know? You never know. You might get a nice nugget out of that. Now, this is showing people the investments of the markets. You lose 50% of your money. You have to have 100% gains in the market in order to break even. Most people don't know that. Oh, I lost 50%. The market went up 50%, so you only gained 25. You have to let them know that they have to double their money in order to break even. Uh, let me see. My slide is almost over. But let's get down to this. This is what the IUL can do right there. This is what it can do. It historically, since 1995 to 2014, gained 9.75%. It helps mitigate tax risk, which means is it helps cut out taxes. It also helps you protect. It's a perfect option for business owners. It's also avoid probate. It also is a nice prenuptial agreement. Not saying y'all. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm glad you asked. That means if I if your if your account gains, let's say you had ten thousand in the account and it gains five thousand dollars and the account started in January of 2016, uh, January 1st, and January 1st of 2017, it gained five grand, that's your new principal. So it resets that principal back to set of 10, it's now 15. So we can all sell, we can all sell products, but I don't think people need all the products, people need this business. People need to see how, how to help families because everybody's in the worst shape that they're in now. And we're getting better at what we're doing, so that means we have to help them get better. If they keep saying no, 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 say no problem. Just say, who do you know want to get out of debt besides yourself? Because I know you're not in debt. You work for Google and you're a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to give them tough love. You got to hit them in the mouth. So, and it's an upside growth on this. Now, here's the benefits of all of it. I set these up, you know, home, children, bills, parents, education, protection, cash accumulation, cash value, interest rates, compound stuff. All this is good money, good money. So I'm done with that. Anybody have any questions before I get down from here? Anybody, y'all can speak now. Y'all can speak now. It's only, it's only, it's only, listen, if you don't ask me now and you had that question in your brain is burning up, y'all going to be sorry. Anybody want to know what they want to know? IUL? 
Yes, ma'am. So you said that we should actually refer to the beginning when we sit down with them before we start discussing what we have to offer? Well, let me ask you this. If you gave me all your financial information, because first of all, let me do this. How hard is it to get an F and A? Is it hard to get an F and A? Okay, not with some people, right? But it's all how you say it, right? Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this. If they give you the F&A, and they give you them numbers, and they dig in their boxes, what else can you ask them for? Why not? Why not? Why not? The only thing they can do is say, well, I don't want to help nobody else save money besides me. Come on now. So why not ask for it right up front? and have them call. Give them homework. Might as well give them homework. Okay, any one more question? Well, have call the people that don't know you. Oh yes, you think you should call somebody that you don't know? Exactly, why not have them do a warm call for you? It's called friendship farming. Why not farm their friends? I mean, and then that's when you offer them the business one more time. Did you know that we have a program for a referring agent called the Revenue Sharing Program, that every person that you refer to us, you might get about 250 or better? Really? Yes. Would you like to know more about it? Yeah, well, it's not now, it's not the time to talk, but we'll get on that. What day are you free? I'm gonna set up an appointment, you need to come to the office. You make nine times everybody come to this office. The reason why you want to come to the office, because you want them to see it. This is not an MLM. They want to see trophies, they want to see plaques, they want to see everything. So sell them the dream. It's all about selling the dream, okay? You always let them know that they can retire correctly if they deal with somebody like you. You have integrity. You're willing to help them. And once you start really wanting to help somebody, they can feel it. They'll give you everything, okay? All right, well, what I'm going to do I don't know if I have the pleasure of bringing Mr. Marcus back up because he is the MC of the night and uh, he is looking so smooth in that uh, Englishman suit. I love it. I want to be like him when I grow up. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, you can talk to me at any time, talk to me. Um, but I would like to pass this back to Marcus Bynum, the man of the hour. And uh, you guys have an awesome day. Thank you. <laughs>